Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of The Engine Shed. Today I thought I'd just quickly do a um, small how-to video on how I ballast my track. Um, I've started to make some serious progress in that respect, so I thought I'd share how I go about doing my ballasting. So for today's video, I'm just gonna do a very small mock-up, and I'm gonna use this piece of um, foam core, and we're gonna go from there. So when you're ballasting your track and laying your track and positioning your track and doing all this sort of thing, you need to start with a very simple a layout plan. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to use two small pieces of off off-cut track. By the way, this is Pico um, Code 100 Flex Track with the concrete sleepers. It's great stuff. It looks really good for modern image layouts. So if you want to use that, you can. It's about a couple of quid more than the box of 25 of the wooden sleeper. But you know what? It looks a lot better than the other stuff. So up to you you can use either it really doesn't matter so we've got two little off cuts here that I'm not going to use for anything else oh, excuse me the next thing we need to do is um, track overlay so most of you would probably use cork me I use foam so this is just a three mil foam extrusion you can get this probably anywhere any hardware store or arts and crafts store you can pick it up online from model railway supplies I can't remember where I got my stuff from but it's just 3mm thick foam. The idea is that you lay this down underneath and it sort of dampens the noise, but I can tell you honestly that once you actually glue the ballast down, that sort of becomes irrelevant. But it gets the elevation you need. The next thing you're going to need is some PVA glue. I'm just using some Sellys wood glue. It's pretty much PVA in every sense of the word. So we're going to start by gluing down this, this foam. Again, if this was your layout, you'd have an actual measurement and diagram, but for today it's not really gonna matter because I'm gonna show you some cool little technique. Okay, so we're gonna start by just putting some nice wavy lines on the on the foam, just like that. Okay, now traditionally you'd weigh this down. Um, we're not going to worry about that too much today. Now, <clears throat> for those of you who were interested in my last video when I built the Helix, I used this thing called DCC Concepts Power Base. And this is this stuff here. So the idea is that when you use this stuff, and you can use this anywhere on the layer, the idea is it's supposed to improve the performance of your locomotive. When you use this stuff, and this is why the underlay is so very important, the idea is that you lay it down like so, and because the way it's designed, you line it up just like that, Glue it down just like you would the underlay, and then you position your track over the top, just like so. Okay, very, very easy to install, but you've got to plan for it in advance and make sure you're using it in the right application. So just make sure that's the case. Otherwise, this stuff is a cracking example. Um, I understand a lot of people seem to be having issues with this, so I was reading an article very recently about this product on DCC Concepts website themselves. And what needs to be pointed out is that if you're using Code 100 track, obviously the results aren't going to be as good as if you're using Code 75 track. So, you know, bear that in mind. It's all got to do with the relative strength of the magnets, the distance between the top of the rail and the bottom of the locomotive, and the bottom of the locomotive to the actual magnetic plate underneath. So if you're within 5 millimeters of that, you should be pretty good. I mean, the results I've got are really good, and you can see that for yourself in later videos. But anyway... That's just to keep in mind, and that's just how easy it is to install Powerbase, but we'll move on. So the next step was just to put us in positioning the track. And again, we're going to glue the track down. Normally I would nail the track down because I don't like gluing track down until I actually am happy with the layer. And again, we're just going to put some PVA down like so. And that's just going to hold the track in position. So again, you're going to be using ballast in here shortly, so it really doesn't matter. Now, ballast. The two types of ballast that I'm probably most fond of at the moment um, are from Woodland Scenics. I use a medium ballast. So this is a medium grey blend. Um, I would have a product number for you. I think the product number is J0717. 
And this is a fine ballast that I use in my yards, which I'm going to weather and it's going to look a lot grittier and dirtier. And this is, I think it's J0426. And this is just a brown fine ballast. And you can probably notice in the past that I've had brown fine ballast over in my uh, uh, fiddle yard, whatever you want to call it. Now, how do you do long sections of tracks? Now, there's a cool little thing that you can use called a ballasting tool. This is a little ballasting tool that I actually 3D printed. So for those of you with 3D printers, I can put this little model up, or a link for this little model up on the video and you can have a crack at printing this yourself. Now, because the track here is so small, I'm not really going to bother too much. Well, I might for one, all right, I'll, I'll do it for one. The idea is that there's grooves in the bottom here. There's holes on either side. You fill up the ballast in here and just like a hopper, it disperses as you pull it along the track. Okay, and the result's pretty good. If you're doing large, long sections of track, this stuff is good, but you know, it's only a very small ballasting tool. You can get bigger ballasting tools for better. But that's cracking, you know, that's easy to do. It's about a two hour print, and you've got a tool that you can use over and over and over. It's strong, it's really, really durable, and you can make it in whatever color you want. How good is that? So that's something I'll put up there if you want to try that. You can, it's a cracking little tool. So, um, I will, I'll do one. I'll do one to demonstrate the, the effectiveness of my 3D printing prowess. So we just line the tool up like so, and this is just a case of carefully pouring the, the ballast out. Okay, and then you just slowly move it along like so. There's too much ballast in this, but you know what, that's fine. And that's my point. This is too big for, Anyway, you get the idea. So, how am I gonna do this? Oh, crap. What we'll do. Wasn't a total disaster, but you get the idea. Okay, so traditionally I would probably usually prefer using a spoon, but you know, overall it doesn't really matter. You just gotta make sure that there's enough clearance over the top of the sleepers and definitely not anything in the way of ballast inside the track. So this is where a nice little fine brush comes in handy and I happen to have one. So just a nice little fine brush like this, hold your track in place and just make sure you get that ballast out of near the rail, otherwise your locomotives are not going to enjoy that. Okay, now again, normally you'd have a track either side of one another, so you'd like to build up the ballast along the side, just like so. So it looks a little bit nice and neat. Okay, so that's the first way of doing it. The, tr the better way of doing it, honestly, is with a spoon, because that way you can just get a nice quantity. And you can see it doesn't take much. And this is about 100 mil of track right here. Just with a little plastic spoon, you can get as much as you need in there without making it look completely messy like the track laying tool. If you are doing the track laying tool, you are only really using it for big applications. So if you've got a big long section of track, like I said, ideal. Use it for that, not for this stuff. Okay, so we can just brush this into the cracks and already look how much neater it is compared to that. I'm hoping the camera is picking this up. It's not really easy to see this stuff up close. Okay, 
So that's that done, we don't need any more of that, that'll do. And again, we'll just brush over the top of the rail head to clear all the ballast away. Okay. That's pretty good, I would say. So the next part is that obviously you can't leave it like this because if you move, all this ballast is going to go moving around with it. So we need to actually glue the ballast down properly. Now, the way to do that is with this stuff. In this container is a mix of two parts water, two parts isopropyl alcohol and one part PVA glue. I can't remember for the life of me who gave me this formula, but it's by far and away the best consistency that I've worked with in the past. So basically you want to water it down and your PVA glue should just look like milk in the end and I'll show you what I mean by that. Now, two other tools you're going to need. You can get yourself a syringe, just like you would with um, from a chemist and also an eyedropper. Eyedroppers are really good for points. If you're ballasting a point, you want to make sure you use this one so you don't get glue in near the switch blades and things like that. And that way you can avoid making any sort of maintenance issues. And you know, also you want to try and avoid getting PVA glue on the top of the railhead because it takes hours to clean that crap off. So just don't do it. And that's the other part too, ladies and gentlemen. If you wanted to, you could add, um, you'd have to paint the rails first. That's again up to you. Personally, I don't do it that way. I usually do it the opposite way because I'm a bit backwards like that. It doesn't really matter. So <clears throat> I'll do the first one with, um, no, actually, I'll show you something different. First, we'll ballast one normally first. Now, you gotta understand that PVA glue dries clear, so in some cases, when you glue this stuff down, it probably looks a lot cleaner than it should. So we've just got our little syringe here, and we're just gonna, between the tires, just like so. And thanks to the alcohol, this will evaporate really quickly. So that will settle in, all that ballast around the track will um, eventually sit and glue in. With the eyedropper, you would just go through and touch up all the little things you've missed, so little spots, like here, here, and again. The, great, the cool thing about PVA is it also makes ballast very workable when you wet it. So you can get in there with your finger and just clean things up really quickly last minute and get that consistency looking just right. Now, <clears throat> that's the first way of doing it. Now, as I said, you can do it that way. The results are okay. What tends to happen is you get a really, really high sheen on the, of the ballast and it doesn't look so realistic. It actually looks quite shiny and reflective if you put a light over it. So I tend to avoid that. This is one of the recent things I've discovered from um, Facebook group that I recently joined and there's a gentleman on there who uses acrylic paints just like this and he mixes it in with the PVA glue just small amounts and by definition it weathers the ballast which is a great idea because I personally hate air br airbrushing this crap it's just so much 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 work for such a little little bit of track so I'm not going to airbrush so I'm just going to add a bit of black paint and a bit of oh actually no maybe not black all we want to do is sort of get a bit of a dirt feel to it, so some burnt umber and just a little bit of burnt sienna. And then we'll add just a splidge of black just to get a bit of an earthy feel and just see how it looks because I've never actually tested this out before. A few moments later. Okay, we're back. We've just had a bit of an experiment mixing up some of this test um, ballasting glue. So what I've ended up with is this really nice earthy looking colour. Probably about the same as a, between a burnt, burnt umber and a burnt sienna. But it's a wash. So just like you would on any anything you're going to wash through the colour and it'll glue it down. 
So we're going to try it with an eyedropper, not the syringe, because um, I really don't know how this is going to work out, to be perfectly honest. So this is going to be interesting. Um, this method has been used. I know it's been used and I know it's worked, so we'll just see how it turns out. Because, you know, obviously these colours dry lighter than they do when they're wet. Or when they, when they come out of the tube. So this dries a lot lighter than the colour would actually present itself. So, let's, let's fingers crossed and see if this works. So just again, the same technique as before. Just keeping things out of... And at this point you can also go through and add a bit more ballast because I just breathed and blew about half of it away. tops of the rail heads you can just pick up with your finger. <laughs> and you can see that's actually really washed through quite nicely. Always, of course, handy to have some paper towel, just so you can dab up any excessive amounts of water, like I'm doing here. Yeah. So you can see that wash actually does work, but it's gonna look a lot lighter when it dries. So I mean, that's an idea worth exploring, I think. Um, we can always test it out later on with some darker colors. But it's an option, and just remember too, like I said, you wanna keep the top of that rail head clean, so paper towel over the top of that, usually as soon as you put the glue down, it's gonna save you a lot of heartache. So there you have it. It's a very simple process, it's a very quick process, and you could probably get a couple of, if you put a day to it, you could probably do your layout quite easily. Um, points are obviously a lot more difficult. You've just gotta make sure you take care, which is why a spoon is always useful. Um, tend to, I tend to find the medium grain of ballast is the best type because it just gets the nicest consistency. Um, fine ballast really likes to clump together when you glue it together, but um, still, it gets the results you probably were looking for anyway. So. That's all I have for you today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, this was more of an experiment than it was a factual video. This version, you can see that's pretty much set down now already. Um, <clears throat> but you can see what I'm referring to. You can see the difference in the color straight away. This looks a little bit more realistic, although it's probably not at the moment because it's still got to dry. And this looks a bit too pristine. So I'm going to experiment with this a little bit more and see what kind of results I get and probably share them back with you in another video. But um, until then, I'll uh, catch you in the next one. So thanks very much for watching.